Thank you, thank you, Regis. Um, so, yeah, I'm Kabies Julien. I work in uh, Oslandia company, and we develop some uh, some tools uh, based on QGIS to uh, to deal with the geology data and to uh, serve some specific need for uh, geologic uh, people. Um, so. Just to be to be quick, Auslandia is a company trying to contribute to uh, QGIS and to other uh, GIS uh, open source open source uh, software. Yes, and uh, we make some training, we make some consulting, and also development. And uh, to me, me, I'm a C++ and Python developer, and I try to contribute to QGIS from time to time, and I. Develop some Python public plugin into QGIS. For the four tools, I'm going to talk to you about four tools, uh, which are called Albion, Controlcraft, OpenStopy, and QGLO GIS. And this presentation is to show you what these tools are doing, but it's also to show you that you can easily uh, adapt QGIS to your specific need. You can develop some stuff and reuse the QGIS capabilities, the QGIS functionalities, to just do what you want to do uh, specifically. So these tools have been funded by uh, two companies, two entities, which are Orano uh, and Sierra. CEA, they both work uh, in uh, energy. Sierra, it's a French research uh, center. And most of them are open source, not all of them but maybe they will be in the future. So first of all, Albion. Albion is used to create three-dimension uh, geological model into QGIS. Uh, so the goal is to build uh, three-dimension uh, three underground uh, mineral um, volume. So the client wants to know the quantities of mineral there is underground on a given field. And so to, he wants to estimate the, the quantities of mineral or specific mineral that he wants to, to extract from the ground. And to do that, what he do, he has a special truck which uh, drills some borehole in the ground. Uh, he makes some different uh, borehole uh, in the ground and he extracts the rock. He observes the type of rock that he gets. And uh, from this information, he gets some lithology information. And it also, uh, as he drill in the hole, he also get the resistivity of the of the ground, and then he put a probe in the ground and he measure the radiometry. So once he uh, do that, he do it for um, several. He, he drills so many holes, thousands of holes in the field, and then he get all this information. And once he has this, he has a um, three-dimensional mesh of data. And what he wants to have then is to have this, meaning the, the three-dimension volume. To do that, he's going to observe the lithology, but also uh, the um, high value of radiometry or resistivity. And he's going to tag it, he's going to identify it, he's going to take all the value above um, a given uh, value, and he gets some. Uh, he identifies this piece, this piece of radiometry uh, block. Once he does that, he imports everything into QGIS, and so this is QGIS. Uh, this is the map canvas of QGIS, and what you see here, uh, the red uh, one, is uh, the view from above about the field, and each dot is uh, each uh, cross section is a dot, is a hole that's been drilled in the ground. Then you choose two axes of projection, and it project in two dimensions to see uh, the different value of the, um, of the drill, of the hole. And here, so you can see, uh, for instance, uh, the horizontal one is displayed uh, down there, and the vertical one is displayed here. And see, here you can see the different hole with different uh, value of uh, radiometry, which has been tagged, meaning that uh, here, 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 and here, you have high value of radiometry that we are looking for, for the mineral that we are looking for. Once you do that, 
we go to the next step, which is to create graph. The graph part is to just connect the different pieces of uh, interested uh, rock, a uh, radiometry identified rock uh, that we want, uh, that we want, and it's gonna connect together, meaning that this one is probably connected to this one, and to this one, and to this one, to this one. And according to this graph, we're gonna build a two-dimensional volume. We have a two-dimensional part. So the graph creation is, um, is made automatically according to some uh, specific angle and distance, uh, meaning that if these two are uh, closer enough and uh, there is not a too, uh, too big angle, we're gonna connect uh, it together. But this automatic part uh, could be um, checked again by the operators, it's gonna explore all the mesh to check that there is no mistakes. So, uh, sorry, this is the cross section view, the main? Yes, this is here, you see um, this one, you, you, the yellow one, this is the view from above of the field, the yellow one is the projection of this. This is connected to the yellow one. Uh, uh. And so once you do that, once you have correlated the radiometry part between them, you can process it and you can generate, generate a three-dimensional volume. And that's what you obtain. That's what the three-dimensional three -dimension, uh, volume that you op obtain. Uh, so you can display it in QGIS and it can also be exported for other uh, tools. So just to sum up, uh, Albion is an open source software. It has been developed since 2016. Uh, it's a QGIS plugin. It has been developed in Python and OpenGL. OpenGL for the three-dimensional part. And it reuses what we call a SIG database parading, meaning that we store all the data that I showed you before, the value of radiometry, the different type of lithology, etc. We store all the data in a PostgreSQL, PostGIS database, but we also store um, the meaningful code, the code that is responsible of generate the three-dimensional volume. We store it in the database and it is written in PLSQL and also PLPython. So this is for Albion, this is before you actually uh, excavate the rock, you, you dig, in the, dig in the ground. Once you do that, you have to manage your uh, possibly open pit mine. So this is an open pit mine. And <clears throat> when you manage your open pit mine, what you want to do is you cut the rock in different blocks that we call slabs, and you load it in a truck uh, so you can um, store somewhere else and so you treat uh, them uh, later. But when you just, uh, before you load the, the slabs in the truck, you want to measure the radiometry. To, this is the same thing than Albion, you want to know exactly what the kind of rock what is, uh, that you have. So to do that, there is a people, he has a tablet and he has a QGIS on his tablet. He has the application control craft. It is connected to the, to the probe. The probe is connected also with a GPS. And it's gonna measure all the radiometry of the slabs and it's gonna put it in a truck. So this is control craft. Control craft is a simple application. It, it's used to just manage the type of rock that you get in your open pit mine. So this is what it look for. This is the view from above of the open pit mine. You see the different slabs, <coughs> and there is different color according to the radiometry value of each slab. <coughs> and we have also a three-dimensional view, and you can some you can do some cut, filter, filtering also in the three-dimensional view uh, according to the view that you want to to have. So this is also QGIS. This is. 100% QGIS. You can also deal with the truck management, tell what rock you do in uh, which rock you, you put in which truck, and etc. etc. 
This is another view of a controlled craft. This is the tracking view, meaning uh, you can see all the mesures that have been made by the operator on the, on the field. Each dot is a mesure that he made, and each uh, dot is colored according to his uh, radiometry value. Okay, so to sum up, Control Craft is a QGIS plugin also developed in Python and OpenGL. Um, it's uh, a tablet but also a desktop application. There is a desktop application with more functionalities like uh, statistic and etc. Uh, it's connected to a probe uh, which Bluetooth uh, directly in QGIS. We communicate in Bluetooth with the probe. Uh, all the data are stored in a PostgreSQL PostGIS database. It's not public at the moment, but I'm pretty sure that the client will be uh, will be okay to put it in open source. Another application is OpenStopy. Uh, this is kind of the same thing than Control Crab, but for underground mine, uh, meaning that we want to monitor uh, the quantities of mineral or specific minerals that we want. And we want to also refine estimation that we have maybe with Albion in the first place. Meaning that we know that we have uh, such quantities of mineral and we just want to, as we dig in the ground, we want to know uh, if we, we have the predicted quantities of mineral that we, that we, that we have. Um, and to do that, there is two things. There is operators going underground the mine, still with a tablet, still with QGIS, and they made some drawing with QGIS. They draw the different layer of lithology that they see, uh, the different type of rock that they see. Uh, they made some drawing with QGIS, and they can also draw some all in a face and get uh, for each depth uh, some radiometry value, um, still with a probe connected to Bluetooth. Once they have this information, you have a three-dimension information with the, with the probe and the hole that you drill. And you can also have a three-dimension with the draw that uh, the operator made. Uh, where, why? Because you can extrude it. We extrude the draw that he made, so we get some three-dimension information. And in the end, the goal of all of this is to have a three-dimension representation of your mind. So it looks like this in the first place. So this is QGIS. The operator, it just tells uh, which face is going to draw. Uh, he put it on a map. And then he right click and edit. When he edit, he has this guy. And this is QGIS. But we reuse the QGIS Canva to, draw, to, to just draw the face. Uh, the operator it has a, a, a stylé. A, a pen just to draw on QGIS, on this tablet, the different type of layer that you see. It can also uh, set some different parameters, uh, fill some different value like uh, uh, the color, the different type of oxidation of the rock, etc. Et and it can also click on the hole and make the radiometry measure with the probe. So everything is. Um, set with the QGIS application and stored in the PostgreSQL database. Once we have all this information, we are capable of building, so this is a simple representation of the mind, but we could build a more complicated, uh, a complete representation of the mind in three dimensions. We have extruded the user drawing, the operator drawing in three dimension, and we have also, uh, on the second part, uh, on the left part, we have also the radiometry value uh, that we, 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 we build some block according to the different value of the different all at different depths. So OpenStop, still a QGIS application on a tablet, a uh, QGIS plugin on a tablet, uh, Python, OpenGL, PostgreSQL, and PostGIS, told you already, it's not public at the moment. Last one is QGLOGIS, is open source, is on the GitHub. Uh, this one is quite different from the other because it's a tool, but it's also a framework. You can reuse it in your own QGIS uh, plugin. Uh, it's actually used by OpenSOAP 
and uh, maybe soon with uh, by Albion. And so what it does, it just plot uh, some numeric values. Uh, <coughs> it can plot a large amount of uh, data. It is capable of um, drawing so large amount of data. Uh, it, you can also display the different type of lotology according to different type of representation. It can accept different type of data format according how you store it in your database. Uh, and it reused the QGS Symbology system uh, and drawing capabilities to draw this stuff. So I'm going to show you a video. You can reuse the QGology Symbology system to just edit and choose how you want to display your uh, plot. And it also used the QGIS expression, uh, which is quite useful, and I'll show you in a video just after. So here is what to look like. So the user just click on a point on a map, uh, which has some uh, array of uh, value. And so you can see here the lithology, uh, which is uh, each data is connected, uh, it's associated, it's integer is associated to a different uh, visualization type. You can add some uh, different plot, you can uh, uh, zoom in, zoom out, uh, drag in, etc. You can re reorganize a different type of plot that you have. Um, so yes, you can move, etc., etc. And you can, what I, what I told you before, here is the QGS symbology system. So if you had already uh, done some uh, QG styling for layer, uh, this is exactly the same. So you can pick the different color, the different uh, size of line, uh, the opacity, uh, either you want to display a plot with dot, uh, with point, or with line, or with polygon. Uh, you can choose whatever you want. Uh, any of the functionalities that are available in QG Symbology system is available. Here you, you can see the use of QGS expression to choose uh, different color according to different value, but you can also, uh, so here you see this expression and the people select a different color uh, according to the expression. And uh, another thing, yes, here you can see all the lithology rocks, meaning that we have an expression and according to this expression we choose a specific SVG file, which is displayed in the lithology plot. Uh, so, and this is just to show that all the data are stored. In this example, they are stored one feature as one array of data, but you could have one layer with several features which you want to plot also. I conclude, uh, to sum up, um, this is kind of a mature tool set that we develop and we have some already uh, new feature to develop that have been planned for Albion, Control Craft and OpenStop. There is some uh, second version which is uh, already planned and in QGLOGIS we already add time series meaning that you can display data according time and uh, we're gonna make it, we want to make it more generic so it can deal with any type of data, any format of data. Not any, but most of. And so if you have some idea of future request, uh, contribution are welcome, of course. So thanks. So five minutes for questions. Let's go. Anyone? Yes. Uh, yeah, I was just curious. You showed some 3D representation of volumes, like the apologies. Is this a roster uh, a representation? Do you define some kind of 3D roster and then you fill each uh, roster point from the data? Or are you developing uh, services like uh, lithological contacts and perhaps other features like faults? And then doing some kind of extra construction? Okay. So I repeat the question from the live stream. Uh, is the 3D uh, underneath some kind of raster 3D or vector? Or 3D where you reconstruct the geology? Always vector, uh, meaning that we have some uh, points, uh, we have some, uh, we generate some triangle 
according uh, it depends on the application but uh, everything is uh, vectorial information and we use OpenGL to just draw some triangle we made some triangulation before and then we display all the triangle in OpenGL and we are actually thinking about reusing QGIS 3 dimension 3D uh, QGIS 3D uh, because it has already some format uh, built in that could display what we the, the type of data that we have but we start once uh, the first time we start to develop this thing which is 3D was not actually mature and it was not in the core of the application in stable application but now we're thinking about reusing it Just uh, a curiosity, uh, I guess that you do a sort of uh, 3D interpolation, right, of your samples, and how do you do it, which, which kind of interpolation is it, uh, if you do interpolation, uh, and uh, which uh, software you use for doing it, and if you consider also geological rules uh, in doing this uh, interpolation. For Albion, I think, you, you mean Albion, yes. Um, so I'm not, uh, I'm not sure I can uh, answer specifically to this question, but what we use, uh, it's uh, Seagull. Do you know Seagull? It's, uh, we use Seagull to make the triangulation. Uh, for the interpolation, I'm not sure, uh, because I'm not the main developer of Albion, so I'm not really sure how it is made. And uh, the sequence question, I don't remember, was about the rule. About the interpolation. Uh, I, yes, I don't know. You, you. Yes? Hey, thank you for your presentation. My question is about hardware integration. Do you have a specific uh, uh, hardware which you are using for data acquisition via Bluetooth? Sorry? Hardware acquisition. So you are getting, the, you have some sensors and you are getting the data from the field. Uh, my question is that what type of hardware you support? Or you have designed your own hardware for this purpose? Uh, this is another company that built the probe and which uh, the GPS. Uh, this is the GPS is a RT cube. Maybe it, it rings a bell for you. It's a really precise uh, GPS, a centimetric uh, GPS. And the probe, it has been built by a company which I don't remember the name, uh, which is. Uh, I don't remember, but maybe ask you. Uh, the question was about the interface between GPS and that hardware. Bluetooth. It's a Bluetooth. Yes. Is it uh, just for this hardware or you can adopt it to this hardware? No, no, it's specific. It's spe oh, this is um, the company that built the probe. They give, uh, they give, them, uh, they give us uh, a driver. And so we use this driver uh, with Bluetooth. So it's specific to this device. And this was not open source because I work with him. And <laughs> we have had issues with uh, custom projections. And, uh, if you yeah. want to extend it for other hardware manufacturers, that was the reason is that then it becomes open. Yeah, I yeah. hope so. <laughs> but <laughs> any more? Did you have one question? It was a follow up on the interpolation, but if you have a second question. It's about uh, uh, because you are working with the 3D data and uh, it's a vector data set. Uh, have you considered doing this uh, classical geological modeling or not the modeling, but we use these laser point clouds or the 3D model of underground mines and then doing the probe on top of them to get a, a sort of a lithological, uh, not just the interpolation, but you have a 3D view of the rock surfaces as well. And then plot the values or assign the values or a sort of a classification for those outcrops. Thank you. Okay, so you say to to make a, a classification of the rock before building? Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> the, uh, to, yes, yes. It, this is an idea. Today, uh, today it works. Uh, we just um, use two information above the three I mentioned: uh, radiometry and geological formation. And so the two are co correlated, meaning that if you are not in the good geological formation, you don't take the radiometry value, even if it's above uh, a, a given value. You mean? So this is just the type of classification that we make at the moment. 
Okay, thank you very much, Julien. That was uh, nice.